Well, hello, friends. How is everybody? It is Thursday afternoon, and I just wanted to check in about a few things. I have a little agenda. Can you see I have four things that I wanted to chat about with you here on a video? Okay. Um, number one, you can hear in the background, Andres Schiff is playing Bach. I just wanted to give a shout out to Zachary Wolf, who doesn't know I exist, but who wrote a fantastic review of Andres Schiff's concert that he gave in Carnegie Hall the other night, last night, two nights ago, um, which was the exact same program he performed here in Ann Arbor. And Zachary Wolf perfectly articulated exactly how I felt about the concert. How often does that happen that you are completely in sync, completely on the same page with the reviewer, right? So often, even if you're sitting in the exact same performance, you come away with such different experiences. He perfectly, perfectly encapsulated my feelings about that concert, which were very ambivalent. Things about it that I was, you know, incredibly taken with and really impressed by. Other things I thought really were disappointing. And he put it perfectly. I was having to underline and I was reading it alone, exclaiming out loud, exactly, exactly. That's perfectly put. Yes, Zachary, right. That was my experience reading this review. You know, pointing out how Schiff kind of presents himself as someone who just lets the music speak for itself. And he is an incredible technician. But that sometimes works and is, I think, as Zachary Wolf put it, pleasingly reticent. But sometimes it feels detached. And that is how I felt, particularly in the Goldberg. Some of the most meaty, beautiful, juicy variations felt a little thin, a little light, Andras. So thank you, Zach Wolf for putting down how I felt. It's just somehow validating and exhilarating. I love reading reviews. Even if you can't see the performance, never have, never will, sometimes you read the review and you're just like, you feel like you've been to the theater if it's a well done one, right? Yeah, I, I love Ben Brantley. It's my favorite of the New York Times theater reviewers, uh, critics. So thank you critics for all your hard, good work. As long as you say how wonderful I am in my performances. I'm kidding. No, it's good to have the critical balance for other people. Um, okay, so that was number one, loved the shift review. Number two, I wanted to share a funny thing also from the New York Times. <laughs> um, guys, you do know that Hanukkah falls on Thanksgiving this year for the first time, maybe ever, maybe not ever, but I don't think it happens again for like 70,000 years. Maybe never. Maybe it's, it's either 70,000 years from now or never from now. <laughs> I forget. Um, anyway, it's kind of exciting. And look at what some clever dude or dudette came up with. The turkey menorah. Can you see that? I mean, adorable, adorable. Ruby will go nuts for this. I mean, it's so cute. And when I showed it to Christopher, he came up with an idea that I think is even better than the turkey menorah, which is why are there not Christmas tree menorahs for those of us melting pot folks who celebrate both? who honor both histories and traditions? Shouldn't there be one? It'd be like shaped like a little Christmas tree like that. And at each point, there would be a little place for a candle. It would be darling. Some of you would think it's sacrilegious. Others of you would say generosity of spirit, inclusivity, lovely, right? I think it's a good idea. And I'm just handing it out there to the atmosphere for somebody to make a buttload off of. Cause I'm a giver. How do we feel about yesterday's haircut? Pretty sad, pretty depressing. It's just so like I look like I'm in fourth grade again. What's happening? No, I don't get it. I don't understand this haircut. Yeah, I, I don't. I no longer understand my hair. It's been about a year since I've really been, you know, in a good kind of relationship with my hair. Um, that wasn't on my list, hair. But you know, it always comes up. Okay, next on the list, Turkey Menorah, the ship review. Oh, Ruby's English test. Ruby showed us this morning at breakfast her English test that was returned to her yesterday. She was pretty pleased. She did very well. She then tried to recycle it. It's all crumpled afterwards, to which I said, no, thank you. We will keep it. But look at the funny thing that happened. The, it was on the book, Call It Courage. Remember that? And they had to, as part of the test, write examples of alliteration and metaphor and simile and onomatopoeia, etc. Now, when I wrote her, read her examples, I thought she had come up with them on her own. I wasn't reading the directions very carefully. Mom. Um, and I thought she'd just come up with these sentences completely just from her brain. So when it said, please, you know, write an example of alliteration, she wrote, the dog's shrill, sharp bark shattered the morning stillness. And I read that and I thought, nicely done, Rubes. That is really, I mean, that's a really nice example of alliteration. 
And then I read her metaphor sentence, which was, the lagoon was a mirror dusted with stars. And at that point I had to put the paper down and think, um, okay, this is prodigious. We have a publishable writer on our hands. She's 11, but she writes brilliant sentences. And I was all set to call her in and say, this improves, you know, I'm thinking like, what else have you written recently? And, and to talk about it. And then I see that it's fine examples from the book. I mean, look, she's, I still believe, has potential to be a great writer, but let's give credit where credit's due. She didn't come up with them on her own. The lagoon was a mirror dusted with stars. I was pretty excited for a minute there. I thought she she had written that herself. Isn't that funny? I was really sort of proud and excited, but it's fine. She's a great writer, and I don't even remember who wrote Call It Courage, but well done to you too, sir, or, or madam. And the final thing I'm not even going to really talk about, because it's already been six minutes. So just save it for another time. Yes. Do you like when the sun is that bleached look? Maybe that's a better look. Hey, listen, guys. I hope you're all well. Have a good day. Look at that syncopation, that clever little Johann Sebastian Bach. Okay, bye-bye now. Bye-bye.